everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm going to talk about the new EPOS GSX-1000 second generation. They've made some revisions based off the old GSX-1000, some things were added or improved upon, but not everything. Now, I have to warn you now, this video is going to get incredibly technical. Um, I've been trying to include more of the science behind audio and, expl and explaining things more detailed to help you understand what some of these specs mean beyond just, you know, how loud does it get? Does it have bass boost? Things like that. So I'm going to have chapters. You can skip to the parts you care about, but honestly, this uh, video, I, I put a lot of work into this because I think this is going to help you understand and make the decision of what features are important for you and how, I guess, with the EQ presets, for example, how that translates into what you actually hear and what your brain processes for audio. So lots of exciting stuff. Let's get into it. Now, I do want to thank Epos for sending this to me for review because without them doing so, I wouldn't have had it for this long to release the review on launch day. Uh, sometimes these products get announced and then like two days later, they're available to buy. So there's always a scramble of getting out the content in time. So it's valuable and it helps you make a decision, but we don't want to take shortcuts and not cover everything. So this was sent to me early enough where I've been able to experiment and play with this for over a week now. They, uh, when they asked about me covering it, they overnighted it basically. Um, so I've had a lot of hours and a lot of nights playing with this. And there's some things that they've improved upon. So this is still a $200 amp deck. It's basically a gaming deck with a headphone and microphone uh, jack support. It has USB-C now compared to the old one. They also changed the wheel color. So instead of the uh, silver aluminum ring, now it's a black aluminum ring. The biggest change I think that people were asking for from the old GSX-1000 is um, the sample rate change for the microphone side. The old Gen 1 was set to 16 bit, 16 kilohertz. It wasn't actually a really high bit rate. And the issue was it, it kind of truncated and compressed the higher frequencies. So your voice didn't sound as clear or open. The new one addressed that. So now it's 16 bit, 48 kilohertz, and it sounds much more natural. I'll do a mic test to show you later so you can hear what that sounds like. But the mic preamp sounds amazing. Now, interestingly, not everything is improved upon, at least from a numbers standpoint. And some people may say, some features or design changes for the GSX-1000 second gen might have been a regression or a step back from the prior one. So what I mean by that is the power output. It's actually been reduced slightly, or at least on the spec sheet, they claim a lower number. The old one was rated at 1,000 volts or millivolts RMS. This is 800. Um, the speaker output used to be 1,000 millivolts again, and then this one is 500. So it's half of the output volume on the speaker output. Not usually a big deal for monitor speakers or depending on what your amp is, they just won't get as loud as they could have with a higher voltage output. Now the other interesting thing was the sample rate. So I mentioned how great it was that they fixed the microphone sample rate. Um, everything now is set to 16 bit 48 kilohertz. It's, it's fixed and locked at that sample rate. On the old GSX-1000, you can change it and play with it a little bit. But because of that and how this is set, there's some limitations. So um, there's no 24-bit support. There's no 16-bit 96 kilohertz. It's all 1648. Now, Dolby Atmos, Windows Sonic, Dolby DTS does not work with the GSX-1000. You're basically using what's built in for all of your audio processing, and I'll get into that later. I'm talking about the sample rates and bit rate and all that stuff because I don't want to hide that, but I want to address it because everyone's going to think, but my high res, what about my 24 bit? It's going to sound terrible because my, you know, $100 Corsair headset did 24 bit. Um, you can't hear the difference. So 16 bit, 44 kilohertz even is typically beyond the human ear in what you can hear. The only reason why you want typically higher sample rates, bit, bit depths, etc., is if you're mastering audio. And that's on the source side. You can't really hear the output to your ear, but recording at higher bit rate and sample rates typically gives you more overhead. So from a gaming perspective, people may be up in arms and say, I lost my 24 bit on a premium product. You're never going to hear the difference. And to me, having it all fixed at 16 keeps this part simple. It's probably made it easier for people to use this uh, DAC because there's no software needed. Um, you won't hear a difference audibly on the output side, but you will hear an improved microphone performance because of this change. I don't know if it was just a limitation of, you know, the, the DACs that were inside and how it's configured, 
but overall, you're still gonna have a great gaming experience and your friends or whoever you're playing with will appreciate that your microphone sounds better. So good that you could even use this as like an entry level, you know, podcast live stream type setup and it'll still sound great. Now, as far as physical design and layout and all that stuff goes, I really like this deck. So let's start with the basics. It's all black now. There's no shiny aluminum wheel. There's no RGB. It's fairly monochromatic. You have white and red illumination. That can't be changed, but it is what it is. And we look at the back of it, you have the USB-C input, which I talked about earlier. Um, you have your speaker output, 3.5 millimeter, 3.5 millimeter microphone input, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone out. While I'm on this note, some people may have wanted a combo port, a TRRS port that also handles microphone. Uh, Epos and historically Sennheiser in the past, they separate the two for PC use. The only reason why you would use a combo is for something like a controller or a phone. But for computers, the reason why they do this is because on a combo port, TRRS, the microphone typically shares the ground with the headphone audio. What that means, and you may have heard this before in a wired headset, you turn your game up and your friends may say, hey, I can hear your game through your headset. Um, it bleeds some of the signal into the microphone signal because they are sharing a ground. Well, the EPOS H6 Pro, the Drop PC 38X, the GSP 600s, they have a dedicated ground lead on their cables. And by doing so, you completely isolate the two, you get better audio performance and better microphone performance because the signal is much cleaner. So that's why you have a split. They are, this doesn't come with a splitter in the box, but you can buy a $6 splitter online to break out your microphone and headphone in case you're plugging in a headset that only has a combo port. So you can still use it but I just wanted to explain why they separated them. As far as the rest of the design goes, I th this volume knob, it's black and it's aluminum, and you may not tell by looking at it, but it feels like the damn ring is levitating. It is the smoothest feeling volume wheel I've ever tried on a gaming deck, period, of any price point. It's effortless to use. It feels amazing. It's quiet, and I like that you can operate it with one finger. You get this little kickstand on the back, so um, whether it's flat or not, it can lay, and it's pretty stable, um, but you kick this open if you want the deck to have a slight angle to you. It makes it a little bit easier to see. I prefer leaving the kickstand out because to me, it's just um, easier to work with every single day. When you look at the side of the unit, you have this second volume wheel. This is a chat volume wheel. The, what's cool about the GSX is it does not require any proprietary software to work. In fact, it doesn't even support any software from EPOS. So don't go online and try downloading the EPOS game suite. This is a plug and play device. Now, because of that, this chat is actually presented as an entire second audio source, which is great because that works on Mac, believe it or not. So if you are looking for a DAC for gaming on Mac, which I know isn't as popular, but now you have two audio sources. Um, on Windows, it'll be presented the same way. That also allows you to do cool, tricky things like assign your music player to the chat, for example, and then now you have a separate volume control for your background music while you're using your primary for gaming. So if you're a solo gamer, you can always use it for stuff like that. Otherwise, in your game, assign it to the GSX-1000 chat output, and you can control how loud you hear your friends or enemies through proximity, the lobby, etc. So it all does that built into the deck. Again, you don't need any special software to do that. Now I'm gonna go over the controls because there's some nifty things that I wanna explain what the symbols are. I already mentioned that you have a volume wheel. This is a Windows control volume wheel. It's not decoupled from Windows. So whatever this says is the same volume that you'll actually have on your Windows machine, making it very simple to set up. Now on the top right here, these little bars, that's actually your EQ preset. If you see nothing around it, you're in flat EQ. Tapping it will do the FPS mode. Tapping it again is your music mode tapping it again as movies, and then tapping it again, turn it off. I actually measured the frequency response characteristics of every preset, so I'll get into that when I talk about sound quality. I just wanted to show you how to adjust it. Now, and another thing, I guess this is important to know, there's proximity sensor on the top of this. So this is gonna dim itself very shortly here, and to wake it up, I can either start interacting with it, but you can see it's darker. Just waving my hand over it is actually gonna wake it back up. Now, um, the other thing I want to show you while it's in two channel mode, that's that 2.0, meaning I'm just doing left and right stereo, is the top left, you can see a headphone. If I tap that symbol, now it shows to speaker. That's how I change my output to the speaker. So if you want to use this DAC um, as a DAC for powered speakers like monitors, you can do that and run your secondary output there. 
Um, and now uh, let's go back to headphone. The headphone with the arrow pointing towards it, this is your microphone side tone. Right now I'm in the low setting and that's the high and then tapping it again will turn it off. The high is actually very clear. It has a really good mic side tone. So again, you don't need any software for this. This will make any analog headset have mic side tone so you can hear yourself speak in case you wanna do that. Let's turn the volume down so I don't blow my ears out later. So now I wanna talk about the other mode, 7.1. There's more things that show up. Now you still get your EQ. I can cycle through the same type of uh, changes to my audio mix, even in the 7.1 virtual surround mode. Then you have this little figure of a person right here. The arrow pointing downward actually means it emphasizes the front center, uh, music stage more or audio stage more. It really acts more like a volume boost in my opinion. It didn't change the imaging so much for me, um, but it does make the audio noticeably louder. If I tap it again, it emphasizes the rear. So what it processes as you know your rear surround or uh, audio mix that's coming from the back, um, it softens the front mix a little bit, kind of focusing on that. So if I tap it again, it's neutral. Now I typically played on neutral because I didn't need that weird boost towards the front center stage. I can image just fine without doing that. The left side is your reverb. Now right now my reverb is off. I'll tap it and I have the plus, that's like a low reverb and plus plus is a high setting. So that's dramatically going to increase reverb. Now, usually I hate that stuff. I'm still not a huge fan of it here, but I'll talk about how that works in a moment. You will notice that this can negatively impact sound quality for music. So for movies and games, it's a totally different thing, but um, I can't imagine too many people wanting to leave this on for music listening only. Thankfully, it's very easy to turn it on and off. Now there's two more things I wanna show you that are kind of hidden. Do you see these four? red lights, these function as audio presets as well. So I can tap the bottom right one here and now I'm in my two channel preset. And you can tell that it wasn't always as responsive. I've had to touch, uh, touch a couple times sometimes to get it to register. Then if I wanted to go to my 7.1 mix, I can tap the bottom left. Now I have my setting that I like to use for the surround, top left again, and look, now it's an FPS mode with a front center stage tap it up here and I can even set this so where if I want my speaker to be my preset with no EQ, all I have to do is press and hold this for three seconds. I'll hear a little beep coming out. There's the flash. Now this white light represents my preset for my speaker out and just tapping this will go back to headphones with my configuration. The bottom right seems to be more sensitive. Oh, okay. So I have to tap just above it. I guess I've always just fat fingered it. And yeah, that's much more responsive if I stick just below the line and it seems to be better that way. The other thing I wanna show you, there is a like gaming lockout mode. Um, there's an official term, I'll put it in the text below because I always forget. But basically, if you are concerned with changing your audio mix by accident because you just wanna adjust volume, you can still do volume and chat. But if I hold the top left and bottom right for more than three seconds, it's gonna show a double T Let's see if I get it. There's the, the TR. Um, now none of these controls work. I disabled all of my touch controls. I can just have volume and chat. So if you wanna, if you're happy with your setting, you can enable that and you can see the two white lights on the corners. I'm gonna tap both corners again to shut that back off and now I can customize my DAC as I was before. And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna spend a lot more time showing you the measurement side of this because there's some really cool things that I can't just verbally explain. It makes a lot more sense if you see the charts and diagrams and all my fancy graphics. Um, but I will say this, this has a just a slightly warmer sound, but in flat mode, it is relatively flat. It measures pretty much perfectly flat. Um, for gaming and music, so let's start with music. I typically always stayed in two channel. I really didn't like the simulated surround for music. Um, Historically, I haven't been a fan of that with anything, um, you know, virtualizing spatial sound because it can mess up your imaging. This does something different though. And I will show you shortly, but there's something called crossfeed. And usually more expensive amps have this feature as like a spatial enhancer. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because I've almost always hated or strongly disliked any spatial virtual sound. This is the best implementation I've ever heard of a virtual soundstage ever of any device, regardless of price. That's a big statement. Um, they have this like brain engine algorithms that they use that has a mix of time delay, phasing, crossfeed, EQ, 
really crazy things that all combined close or I guess knock down the wall from ear to ear. The reason why I say that is because this is what's important to understand. When you listen to headphones, you have your right ear listening to the right channel and your left ear is listening to the left channel. The left ear is not hearing anything from the right. It's your brain that's joining the two signals together. However, in real life, I know that stuff's coming from my right. I hear it out of my right ear, but I'm also hearing the right side with my left ear slightly. It's a little bit different delay. It has a different amplitude and slightly different frequency because of the way my pinna and my ear shape is picking that up. But your brain is still combining audio received from both ears regardless of the direction. It's not isolated in real life like it is in a headphone. So what CrossFeed does is it's a blend. It is taking a little bit of the audio from the right and blending it in in a virtual way with audio that goes into your head from the left so your brain can produce somewhat of a more natural sounding soundstage. That's what's crazy about this amp. And I that's the hardest thing to explain. If that doesn't like confuse the hell out of you, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make this confusing, but I, this is why to me this is such a special DAC is I've never heard a gaming DAC blend the left and right so well to create a virtual landscape. In gaming, you may or may not like that functionality for laser precision pinpoint accuracy on footsteps. However, I was surprised at how easy it was to still pick up footsteps in this virtual mode. However, playing RTS, playing a racing game, open world, you're playing cyberpunk at night, that virtual mode like all of a sudden brings the world more to life, better than anything I've heard um, that you can't really do with just EQ because that doesn't address the whole left and right channel thing. So to me, that is a, a absolutely amazing feature and why I want to dis discuss 7.1 in detail. So now let me show you what that looks like on the charts. Okay, so I actually hooked up this DAC to an interface and recorded the direct output of it so I can measure it. And in flat mode, you can see this red line here. Basically, it's not altering the signal at all. So flat mode is truly flat. We're gonna move on to save some time because I have a lot to cover here. If I switch on the FPS profile, there is a massive difference in audio frequency performance. So you can see that basically from roughly, I don't know, 640 hertz down, it starts to come down here. There's a little bit of a hump that stays around the 300 hertz range. Then it dramatically falls off from 100 hertz and below approximately. When you look at the flat line, you're basically going from 77 to 66.7. So it's a 10 decibel drop in all of your bass frequency. And then when you look at the treble area, we're at 77 to about 84. So again, you know, we're looking at seven decibel increase on the treble region. Now this is gonna come down to how your particular headset or headphone sounds and how this will make a difference. You gotta keep in mind, this is based off of a flat signal. If your headphone is already a very bass heavy headphone or headset, the FPS is going to make the bass more neutral. However, if you have a headphone that doesn't have a lot of bass, and you switch on FPS, now it really has no bass. It's gonna sound like a walkie talkie because you're already taking bass down from a flat or below flat level. So it changes based off what headset you use, but this is how the EQ preset is set up. Now, if I go to music, let's enable that. Music has an elevated treble. You can see it has a nice gradual pickup from 10,000 Hertz and up. This may help with your uh, supposed sound stage and your, the airiness and treble region. It might make things sound more crispy. So if you have a darker sounding headset, a headset that doesn't have too much treble, this will open that up and make it sound more lively. Conversely, there is a huge bass hump. There's a shelf right about 85 hertz that lifts. Um, let's see, we're going from 77 to 86. So again, we're getting closer to a 10 decibel lift um, in overall bass focused on the 85 hertz region. This is not a bad headset for FPS because like in Call of Duty, the primary frequency for a footstep is 110 hertz. So this is gonna help bring some of that forward a little bit more. Um, it's just a matter of if the treble is okay for you or not. Now I wanna show you the movie one. The movie one, and let's just get rid of FPS for now so it's cleaner. The movie is the orange line. And if we follow that, it's not boosting the mid bass as much, like this whole 85 to 100 hertz, but your sub bass is boosted dramatically. The Tiger 300 from Bayer Dynamic has a strong 100 hertz bass note, but the sub bass is fairly lacking. 
So the movie preset would work great on something like the Tiger 300R. Whereas the Sennheiser or the EPOS, like these EPOS H6 Pros, they typically have a little bit more sub bass already. So you may find that it's either too much or it only works extremely well in movies. Now you cannot customize any of the EQ presets on the GSX-1000. These are fixed. So I just wanted to show you how it impacts your sound so you know exactly what changes are happening. Now, I wanna show you something really cool here. So I measured the frequency response in the 7.1 virtual mode. And you can see there is a major difference in the way it behaves. That's because you're looking at reverb, you're looking at shifts, it's doing all these weird things with phasing and amplitude to help virtualize the soundstage. Now, I recorded the left channel while only sending audio to the left channel, and this is the isolated recording of that. If I enabled the right channel, but still only recorded the left, this is that whole crossfeed thing I was talking about where it's taking a little bit of the right and now blending it with my left. Look what happens there's actually a different frequency response. You can see that I'm getting some of the mix that's coming from the opposite side and it's changing how loud it is on the left. This is why you get that whole virtual presentation. This isn't showing everything because this is only capturing frequency response. It's not showing phase and time delay, um, but you can see there's a big difference on whether I'm receiving just audio on the left or left and right that left ear cup is still going to produce a different sound. So it's really cool because now we can finally show what crossfeed technology looks like. Now just to make it even more crazy looking, so if I'm capturing just the left side, this is what reverb off. If I do reverb plus, now you can see there's even larger spikes because it's doing more adding to that whole you know reverb effect. And reverb plus plus makes it even more dramatic. It is all over the place. And you may or may not like it. I'm not a huge fan, but I just want to show you how crazy the audio actually becomes when you start adding, adding in all these reverbs and echoes. Now I talked about that whole center stage thing, the front enhancement versus centered versus rear. I wanna show you, it really is just an amplitude change. It didn't change the characteristics as much. So if I have, if I'm recording the left and I do a front enhance, you can see the frequency response is nearly identical. It's just slightly louder. Conversely, if I go with the rear enhance, again, it's the same frequency response it's just a little bit quieter. So I almost am treating that like a gain setting. If you have a headphone that's a little bit harder to drive or a headset like an open back, um, you may wanna just try that front center stage enhancement to boost the audio output and that might give you the extra volume that you're looking for. Now the last thing I wanna show you just further explains what happens when you apply EQ to a headset or IEM, something that has its own unique audio characteristics. So if I'm sending this signal, this red line is what the DAC is sending out. Perfectly flat, clean signal. If I play that signal on my Salnotes IEM uh, earbuds, $20 IEMs that sound incredible, this is the frequency response I get from those. So you can see that they are modifying the flat signal and adding its own special flair to it. And that higher red line is how it would sound coming from a flat signal. Which means if I enable the movie preset on this, I'm gonna further increase that huge bass shelf on the lower end, so let's do that now. And you can see a massive increase in decibel over flat. So that's because the EQ is adding bass and the Sound Note Zero have their own bass shelf. And you can see the trebles lifted up a little, you know, rather nicely as well, actually. So um, just keep that in mind. You know, if I compared it to the home theater or movie preset before, this is the difference. So this is the exact same preset measured from the DAC versus measured on an earbud. And you can see that there's a big lift across the board. So play with it. Now you know how it impacts your sound. Okay, so now I'm using the EPOS H6 Pro connected to the GSX-1000. And you can tell it does sound more natural. It sounds more clean. Um, there's no weird artifacts or things getting introduced into the mix. So you could use this as, like I said, a good starting point for live streaming or even some podcasts, depending on you know what your budget and resources are. I just want to show you what the mic sounded like. It's very good. All right, now that we got all the technical jargon, science stuff out of the way, the really what it comes down to is, is how you're using it every day, right? And um, it's just the simple fact that I have this effortless volume control that's tied to Windows, so I don't have two separate volumes to work on. The chat mix, while it works great, the minimum setting doesn't completely mute chat, it just makes it very soft. And it was really hard to do it one-handed without triggering the preset on the bottom right. 
So my suggestion is either lock the settings like I told you before doing the diagonal buttons or make it so your favorite preset is the bottom right. That way when you're adjusting it in case you accidentally tap that button, you're not overriding your settings. Um, when it's not in the lock position, I can do it one-handed, but there's a little bit of a catch in the middle point and that catch makes it pretty much impossible to use one-handed without moving the DAC. Little thing like that that I wish was a little bit easier to use, um, but overall it was great. There's no weird audio delays, there's no hiccups, the device wasn't bugging out on me. Um, it's just solid. I don't have to do any firmware updates, truly is a plug and play DAC. It does not work on PlayStation, but it's great for PC. And even though you can't custom EQ it, you can download SteelSeries Engine and use Sonar. Um, Sonar is a free program with parametric EQ. So you can use this as your physical interface for volume and chat, and that still works. The chat function still works even with Sonar. Um, but then you would use your Sonar for EQ while using this for the binaural audio engine because that whole virtual sound is super cool and Sonar can't touch it as far as audio processing goes. So how does it compare to the competition? Well, they have their own competitor, the GSX 300, which is a much less expensive DAC. This is $80 instead of 200 US, or micro USB. They don't have a C variant yet. Really clean DAC, and this one actually does support custom EQ through the EPOS game software. So if you don't need it crazy loud, I showed it with the EPOS H6 Pro close back because the close backs have a higher sensitivity than the open back. So the GSX 300 is loud enough for the close back, 1000 is noticeably louder. So if you like it really loud, just upgrade to that alone. Um, you don't get any of the crazy virtual sound. It does some virtual sound through software, but it's not the same as what this DAC does. It really is pretty special uh, with that. So this is more of your simple DAC and with the bundles that they've done, it makes it a good option if you need a headset. Ultimately, that's a, uh, the GSX 1000 is more capable. Now I grabbed the Astro Mix Amp because this has been my favorite in the past, mainly because it's one of the few that lets you buy a lot of different headsets for Xbox, still get your game to chat mix, and you can still save EQ profiles to it, which is nice. And that comes with the Dolby Atmos license for $130. So if you need a DAC for Xbox, this won't work anyway. Uh, I recommend sticking with the Astro Mix Amp. On the PC side, it gets more complicated. Even though I love this uh, chat mix and the fact that you can do custom EQ, this DAC does not sound as good. So even both set to flat, the GSX 1000 is gonna be a better sounding DAC, both for games and music, in addition to that really cool 3D audio. So to me, the real decision, if you don't need Xbox, comes down to these two at this price range. There's one more I'm leaving out, but I'll touch on it. This is the shit hell too. It's $200, just like this. It has no bells and whistles. It is a very powerful, crazy powerful amp deck that works on PlayStation and Windows. You get a big volume knob here, you get your physical volume knob for mic, um, and a high low gain switch, and it has an optical input on the back. This thing screams, and you can power even a $3,000 headset or headphone with ease. Now where it's let down is there's no other features. There's no virtual sound, there's no EQ presets, um, all that customization stuff, microphone side tone, none of that is here. This is here if you just want a very powerful headset or headphone uh, to be amplified loudly. So if you need the extra power, go with something like the Shit Hell 2 because the GSX 1000, frankly, isn't powerful enough for your higher impedance headphones. This is suggested to go up to 50 ohms. Almost all gaming headsets are 32 and below, so that's fine there. But for the big boys, maybe step up into the Hell 2. Now there's also the like the creative stuff, the Sound Blaster X G6, um, for example, which is even less money. It's great, it's an older amp DAC, but it still has some great features. I'll be honest, I don't own it right now. I've heard it before, but I haven't played with it back to back with this. So um, I'm hoping to get my hands on one and I can do a head to head down the road. But in case that has different features you're looking for, um, it's been a very common exception that even though this doesn't get as loud, the 3D audio engine on this for that virtual sound I was talking about is unique in its class. It's the best sounding one for that you know, virtual soundscape. So that about wraps up the review. I hope you found it helpful and it wasn't overwhelming, but there's just so much to explain on this and $200 is not a small chunk of change for a DAC because this is more expensive than the H6 Pro. And typically I recommend spending more on your headphones than I do on the source gear. 
because you get a bigger uh, return on your investment there. Um, overall, I love this thing. I'm, I think I might actually start using it as my primary DAC for gaming on PC now, just because that virtual thing, when I'm playing by myself, it was seriously amazing. Even in Warzone, when I didn't have footsteps, um, I loved the virtual sound even more than the straight two channel. And then I can always flip it back to two if I wanna listen to music on the side. So this thing's been great. Um, Again, hope you, you got something useful out of this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I have a lot more stuff coming on the gaming and the hi-fi audio side. With that being said, thank you so much for the support, and I'll see you next time. Bye.